My name is Charlie, and I welcome you all here to the loft, aka our room of wonders. If you look around, you'll find that we call it that because this room holds over 127 years worth of Coca-Cola artifacts from over 200 countries around the world. My personal favorite is the giant bottle cap opener in the corner, and frankly, that is not its full size. Originally, it was over 18 to 20 feet long, hanging over Highway I-85 in 2006. But unfortunately, as you can see, we had to cut it down to size to get it to fit through the front door. Now, as you look around, I'm sure you've noticed some familiar faces and curious characters in these advertisements. But I think we can all agree, the most famous face in this room is none other than the Coca-Cola polar bear, who you'll be able to meet today on the second floor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we've been using polar bears in our advertisements for over a century, starting in 1922. However, the polar bear was not made our permanent mascot until 93 during Northern Mike's advertisement. The reason why we chose polar bears in general is because for a while, many fans believed you could not enjoy Coca-Cola any other time except summer. So with the help of a 24-7 wintertime animal, AKA the polar bear, we can ensure to you that yes, you can enjoy Coca-Cola anytime, anywhere, any season. And you know, I think it's gone pretty well so far, don't you think? Now, ladies and gentlemen, for one of our oldest and most important artifacts, not only in the building, but a part of history, our history, it is none other than this item here. This is a ceramic dispenser from 1896, 10 years after Coca-Cola was invented. Now, I'll explain how it worked momentarily, but first, a crash course history on Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola was invented here in Atlanta, May 8, 1886, 138 years ago, by pharmacist John S. Pepperton. Originally, his first original purpose for Coca-Cola was to use it as a medicine, a brain tonic for headaches and heat exhaustion. However, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, while Pemberton was a fantastic pharmacist and inventor, that does not necessarily mean he was particularly good at business in general. So after two years, he decided to sell the recipe to fellow pharmacist and well-known businessman, Aesop Griggs Candler. And it was Candler's idea not only to start the Coca-Cola company, but to start advertising. So the real question is, how would you get your daily dose of Coca-Cola in the early 1900s? Well, you would walk on down to your friendly neighborhood pharmacy and find the ceramic dispenser behind the counter, filled to the top of the bowl with one gallon of Coca-Cola syrup. Place your cup beneath the dispenser and we use something we call our five to one ratio. For one serving or one cup of Coca-Cola, you mix five ounces of soda water with one ounce of Coca-Cola syrup. Of course, we still use this ratio today. Think of our six ounce cans. And you mix it all together to have yourself a nice, delicious, refreshing cup of lukewarm room temperature Coca-Cola. Now, of course, you can always add ice if you want your soda cold, right? If you pay the price. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, there was no refrigeration yet, not until the mid-1900s. So, until then, ice was considered a luxury product you had to pay for for a penny per ice cube in order to get your Coca-Cola cold, which could easily double or triple the value of your soda, as back then, a single serving was only five cents each. And ladies and gentlemen, that was the price for another 70 years straight before they raised the price to six. It took them 70 years just to raise the price by a penny. Now, another important artifact to mention is if we look up on the second to last beam right here, there is a yellow Coca-Cola bicycle. But why yellow? Well, ladies and gentlemen, in the early 1900s, we used many different colors for advertising, long before landing on red permanently around the 1960s. But there was a special connection between that bicycle and delivery vehicles from that time. That's right. 
they were yellow. If you saw any Coca-Cola vehicle painted in yellow, that meant it was specifically a delivery vehicle, bringing your neighborhood area fresh Coca-Cola to enjoy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in about two minutes, more or less, the double doors on either side of the cases will open. You're gonna make your way into the theater to see a six minute clip called Moments of Happiness. Spoiler alert, it is emotional, so, you know, might need a tissue, or a shoulder to cry on, or just use mom and dad's shirt, they're used to it. And then you'll finally be released into the world of Coca-Cola to get started on your journey on your own. On the first floor, you'll find the vault, milestones of refreshment, and the beverage lab. Now, if you're feeling a little bit hungry during your visit, just go up to the second floor to find a seating and eating area with food to purchase. You'll also find Scent Discovery, our newest exhibit icons where you can meet and greet the iconic polar bear. And of course, you'll find our one and only Coca-Cola Taste of Room with over 200 different Coca-Cola products to try from around the world. Good luck, parents. Now, my personal favorite is Sprite Cucumber from Romania. Or, if you're up for it, ladies and gentlemen, I challenge you to try Sour Plum Fanta from China, but be warned, Sour Plum Fanta is specifically notoriously known throughout the company for the fact that it tastes like barbecue sauce. So drink it if you dare. And when you're ready to exit, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna go through the tasting room into the connecting retail store. The retail store on the second floor will be your one and only exit from the building. In other words, you're not allowed to leave without spending all your savings. But on another note, and ladies and gentlemen, do keep this in mind. Once you enter the retail store, you will not be able to go back to the tasting room or any other exhibits in the attraction. It is one way only in your exit point. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, you are free to visit any and all exhibits however many times you'd like throughout your stay, tasting room included. But once you enter the retail store specifically, you will not be able to go back to the tasting room or any other exhibits in the attraction. It is one way only and your exit point. So I recommend saving the shopping spree for last. Gentlemen, I'm talking to you. And with that, we have a few seconds up before the double doors open. My name is Charlie, and I hope we have a spectacular Saturday.